This is going to be, I can already tell it's early days on in the Z8, but I can already tell this is going to be a very, very popular camera. It's going to be something that anywhere from enthusiasts to professionals are going to be finding very, very useful and fits pretty much every genre of photography. Uh, this is very similar to the Nikon Z9, which came out a bit before this, and they put it all into a smaller package. They've added a few more features. They've made a few refinements in there, and it's possibly an even better camera than the Z9. I know that for many people, they don't need that extra size and bulk of the Z9 with its vertical grip that's built in. Uh, so this camera, I think, is going to be a hugely popular big hit for Nikon, and it's got a lot going on. When you dive into the operations and the menu of this, well, there is a ton of stuff in there, and I'm going to go through all of the bits and pieces for you to show you exactly how to work it in every manner of speaking, you might say. So this class has many different sections. Each section is going to have its own topic, and we'll go deep into it. We'll start off with a few basics, just talking about the type of camera and a few important things like the file settings. Next up, we're going to go into the exposure controls and talk about everything controlling the exposure, and there's a lot going on in there. And then one of the most important sections is on focus controls. There's a lot of options in here, and we'll be covering all of them. Then we have capture controls. When you press the shutter release, how is the camera shooting photos? And there's a lot of fun stuff to talk about in there. And then we take a tour of the camera, looking at all the buttons and dials. We'll take a look at the viewfinder and monitor options. There's a lot of things that can be turned on and off in there. We'll take a quick tour of the I menu, a good shortcut menu for finding favorite features. And then we have a full section on video shooting. There's a lot of things that's going on in here. Then we take a look at the camera connections, everything that you might hook up and how it operates and what it does. We have a nice little short section on recommended lenses and give you an idea about the collections that are available. And then the next several sections are on the menu system of the camera. We take each tab, break it into its own section, and go through it. And then finally, we end up the whole class with my field setup guide. We'll go through the different settings that you would likely want to set in various different types of scenarios. Gives you a feel for how you're going to be changing and operating this camera and working with it out in the field. And so that's the class on the Z8. It's going to be a very in-depth class. It's going to be several hours. Uh, it's a great idea just to kind of watch it through the first time, trying to take everything in and then go back again through it, digging into more details and practicing your settings as you go along the way. All right, as we go through this class, I'm going to be explaining things in the menu system that we're officially going to be talking about later on. But I know some of you are pretty quick out there and you want to make those changes right away. So I'm going to give you this menu reference box if you want to kind of jump ahead and make those changes right away. Now, a lot of times we'll talk about features a couple of times in the class, and I will usually reference back to the first time we talk about something, which is usually where I explain it more thoroughly. And so if you want to find a better explanation for it, you might want to go back to one of those earlier sections. Also a part of the class is the class notes. This is a PDF you can print out if you want. This comes with the full purchase of the class. If you take a look at all the videos you get with the class, it'll be listed right at the bottom of that. Now in here are going to be some important notes from the class. The main thing in here that I have is an entire layout of the entire menu system. And this is really nice because I know a lot of photographers like myself are visual and they like to scan through and find things. And this makes finding things in the menu very easy. It also helps you kind of give a good overall feel of size and scope of the menu system. Now on here, what I've done is I've given you my general recommendations for how I would set the camera up to start with. And these are just general guidelines. Now I know all of you are going to want to make your own adjustments. So I have the entire menu system printed again without my recommendations on it. So you can put in your own settings, your own notes, and what other information you want in there. Now, there's also going to be a few other illustrations and diagrams in here from the class itself, as well as some notes on the field setup guide that I have at the end of this class on how I would set up the camera for various types of photography. And so once again, this comes with the full paid version of the class, and you can find it listed at the bottom of all the videos that you have access to in the class. Now, this class is on the Z8. Yes, I know, obvious, but I just want to let you know that 
that is the main topic here. We uh, have a lot of other things in photography that are important, composition and lighting and hooking up for tethering to computers and so forth. But we're going to really be concentrating on how to get great quality images with the Z8 camera. There's a lot of other devices and we just don't have time to go into how those other devices work with it. So we're really staying focused in on this camera. Now, as focused in as we are on this, we are not going to cover absolutely everything. So we're not going into tethered shooting, LAN connection and Ethernet connection. And so uh, if you are needing help on those, well, there is information out there and from Nikon on how to do that. We're really concentrating on how to shoot and capture the best quality images. Now, my bent on photography is I like to know how things work manually to get the highest quality photos possible. There are some options for getting lower quality photos out of the camera um, or having the camera automatically do things for you. And yes, we'll talk about them. I'll show you examples, but we're really going to be concentrating on how to fully operate the camera manually so that you know how it's working and what it's doing so that you can repeat those steps again and again down in the future. Now, I don't know if you know this, but I don't know how much you know or you don't know. And so there's a wide variety of people that watch this class and I do want to explain some more basic things for them. I do know this is a fairly high-end camera and it's likely to have some high-end users like many of you right now watching and you might already know some of these things. Well, we're going to pass by them relatively quickly. And so we'll explain a few of the basic things, but just we want to keep everybody up to a high level playing field, you might say. Now, the camera comes with a variety of manuals. There is a reference guide, and that is your main instruction manual. It's going to be around 950 pages, and there is going to be a lots of important information that I do not have in this class. Um, at least in this class, I'm trying to cover probably 99% of the operation for 99% of the users out there. Uh, so there is bits and pieces of information that might be important to some select photographers who are looking for detailed specifications, some technical information, uh, some compatibility issues with other devices that you may be connecting up to the camera. So that may still be a useful device. I'm trying to replace most of it for most of you out there. Now, there are additional reference guides for the Nikon Z8 that you can get through the Nikon website. You can go to Nikon USA or whatever country you are in, their Nikon representative and their website in that particular country. Uh, you can try also other countries. And so if you want to try a different country to see uh, if they have some good reference guides, uh, take a look for those because there are some interesting options in here that might give you a little bit more information than I'm able to do in this particular style class. And so look for those if you need them. And as I say, there are going to be quite a bit of information in there that we're not going to include in here. I'm trying to cover a general operation of the camera that's going to be very valuable for most users out there. Now, if anyone is new to Nikon, well, welcome to Nikon. They've been around for a very long time. They've been producing high quality cameras for many, many years. One of the things I wanted to highlight with this list of kind of notable moments of Nikon history is all the different lens mounts and lenses that they've had over the years. And so they have uh, come up with many different ones and we're dealing with their latest collection of the Z mount system here. And this looks like something that they will be into for quite some time. Now, the Nikon layout of cameras and lenses that they have is split into a group of four. And definitely they are concentrating most heavily on the full frame cameras in the mirrorless category, which the Z8 fits right into right up there near the top. They do make crop frame mirrorless cameras as well. And so they're going to actually share the exact same lens mount as this particular camera. But there are different lenses that you can use with that because of the smaller size sensor. Now, technically still available, they do have DSLRs. They have not made any new ones or any new lenses for them in a good number of years now and they seem to be dwindling in number, both the camera bodies and the number of lens, lenses available for users out there. And so they still are actively supporting it as they will probably for a number more years. But uh, I think we know the direction things are going and that is definitely towards more mirrorless. When it comes to the lenses, we'll talk more about it in the section on lenses, but this is a Z mount camera. It uses Z lenses. And so these are the ones that are designed for the full frame sensor. Nikon does make some other lenses called Z-DX lenses, and these are designed for their crop frame sensors. Now they technically can be mounted on the Z8, 
but they do not have full coverage. So you're going to get vignetting or kind of a round image on the sensor. So yes, technically they do fit and they do work. You can shoot photos with them, but they are limited in what they can do. So it's probably not the lens you want to put on here. And as I say, we'll talk more about that in section 11 on lenses. Now, when you dive into the reference manual for the camera, you'll see lots of warnings. One of them is keep dry. We'll talk about weatherproofing here in just a moment. This is not an underwater camera. It's not something designed to get excessively wet. Nikon, of course, recommends Nikon accessories for a variety of reasons. And yes, one of those is so that they can make money selling accessories. Uh, but the other reason is, is that they know that they work well. Depending on the type of thing you want to hook up, I may or may not recommend sticking with Nikon. I think there are some other brands of lenses that you can mount on there that work very good. I think Nikon has great lenses and they're a great place to start, but if they don't have what you want, there are some other good manufacturers with that. I would probably stick to Nikon batteries. There are aftermarket ones that will work that technically will not damage the camera, but I think it's a very small cost uh, to pay for most people to buy a Nikon battery. Uh, the electronics, the battery, that gets into some tricky stuff. And if there is something that goes wrong, that would be a very expensive repair. Uh, there's a variety of memory cards that you can hook up. When it comes to flash units, I prefer, if you're going to be wanting to use on-camera TTL flash, I want to stay with Nikon. It's a similar communication system, similar um, operation system on how it operates. And so I think that's really easy. If you're going to be hooking up to strobes, though, more manual flash stuff, then yes, whatever you want. World's your oyster there. Uh, working in a studio, in, in any regards like that, uh, whatever you want to use, whatever brand is fine, camera's going to sync up with that and work just fine. Finally, it says a number of weird warnings in there. And my favorite one is do not use while walking. So if you are a paparazzi using this, be careful. You're not supposed to be walking backwards, photographing your celebrities using this, or at least if you are, please be very careful. Uh, so a lot of crazy things in there. I'd say just use common sense. As far as the construction of the camera, this is using kind of an interesting carbon fiber magnesium alloy body in there. In the big scope of things, it's a well-built camera. It's got a strong, sturdy frame to it. Now, the weather ceiling, talked about this momentarily before, where the camera is recommended to keep dry. That's what Nikon says, but it also has weather sealing. There's been some discrepancies on the description of the weather sealing. I have seen it described as on a level equal to the Z9, which is on equal to some of their previous uh, single digit cameras like the uh, D6, for instance. And so it's very good. I don't know if it's the best sealed Nikon camera. They have not made that claim. But it should be very good and should be good for somebody who's uh, caught with a splash of water or caught in a light to moderate rain. If I was shooting an event outdoors, a sporting event that was going to go on for two or three hours and it was a heavy downpour, you're going to want to have a rain cover for something like that. And so if you know you're going to be shooting in wet weather or you get caught in really wet weather, you need to be careful with this because there are limitations. And you have to realize also the type of lens you have on it as to how well that is sealed as well. And so it does have quite a bit of weather sealing, but you got to be reasonable about, about how far you push it. All right, let's make sure your camera and my camera is ready for today's class. First thing is charging the battery. That's going to take about two and a half hours. You'll need a lens on there if you want to take some practice photos, which is what we're going to be doing in here. You'll need at least a memory card. It uses either the SD or the CF Express or the XQD card in there. Uh, all you need is one. You can have two if you want. That's great, uh, but you only need one in there. Go ahead and turn the camera on and make sure that if you have a lens that has an A and M on it, that is for the autofocus. You can either have it in manual focus, but we're going to want to have it in autofocus just for simplicity reasons here to start out with. So switch that over to A. And then we're going to put the camera into a program mode. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera on. And then what I'm going to do in the back of the camera is press the mode button. And I'm going to dial over to program. This is where the camera is selecting shutter speeds and apertures and more information in section three on that. And then I'm just going to take a photo to make sure that things are working. And I saw the little blip around the uh, edges of the frame. I'll do it again. And that means we have shot a photo. 
Now, your camera may operate just slightly differently than mine because I've made a whole bunch of adjustments, and we're going to adjust, uh, adjust that here in just a moment. All right, one of the important things to know about these cameras is that software runs all the operations on the camera. And from time to time, there are updates. Nikon either finds a bug or a way to improve the camera, and they will issue a free firmware update to the camera. And you can go to Nikon's website to update this. Now, I've got this camera very early on in the release cycle. I got a very low serial number. And we're still at 1.00 on the firmware right now. So we are at the beginning stages. And I would, I would bet large amounts of money that at some point in time, Nikon is going to make a firmware adjustment. Now, if you want to see what your firmware is, you can uh, just follow me and how to find this. So we're going to dive into the menu. So we're going to hit the menu. There's different tabs along the left. We're going to go left and right. We want to go left to tab down to the wrench and we're going to go to the right. And there's going to be a whole long scrolling list of different items. And this firmware is down near the bottom. So I'm going to slow up down here. And firmware version here, last item on the list, we're going to go to the right. And you can see that my camera C is on version 1.0 and my lens firmware is on 1.0 here as well. And so this is uh, early days in the firmware. As I say, they may have changes down the road. Now, when they do make those changes, you're going to go to Nikon's website and you're going to look up the Z8 firmware. Go to the official Nikon website, of course. You're going to download that firmware or software, put it on a memory card, put the memory card in the camera come right here where we went to firmware version, your camera will recognize that it has firmware on it and you can then follow the procedure prompts to upload the new firmware to your camera. Now I do recommend formatting your memory cards before you load firmware onto it from your computer and then formatting it afterwards before you start to shoot photos on it. The firmware file is just something kind of odd and potentially could cause a communication problem uh, with the camera or the computer or something else. And so best to just to kind of isolate that so that it doesn't affect anything else. All right, next up, the camera reset. So if you want to get your camera back to the factory default standard settings, you can do so here, which is what I'm going to do with mine because I have been customizing and playing with mine and getting ready for this class and I've made a lot of changes. And I want to get it back to a normal setting, which all of you can recognize for when you take your camera out of the box. And so you don't have to reset your camera, but if you want to, this is how you do it. We're going to go into the setup menu under reset all settings and take it through its reset operation. All right, so I'm going to dive into the menu and we were in the tools tab over here. And down near the end of this, and a little shortcut is if you come in at the top, if you go up, it goes to the bottom of the menu. So you can kind of circle around the other way very easily. All right, so reset all settings. We're going to go to the right here and I'm going to go up to reset and I'm going to press OK. And this asks us another confirmation to make sure that we are doing the right thing. All right, doing a full reset. We're going to turn the camera off and then we're going to turn the camera back on and it is back now to its factory default settings. And so It'll be a little bit easier to follow me along with the other settings in the class if you want to do that at this time. Now, in my preparation for putting this class together, lots of times just scrolling through the menus and doing test shots in the studio and so forth, but I did take this camera out into the field and I did so in a few different environments. I took it up to Mount Rainier National Park to do some landscape photography. I had a good time up there doing that. It's going to be a very good camera for this type of work because of the high number of megapixels. I did something else. I would put it in the event photography category. I went to a foosball tournament. Yes, some of you know I like to play foosball. And so I was photographing actually one of the greatest foosball players in the world here at a local tournament that we were having. And so testing it under low light conditions, focusing, raising that ISO, uh, dealing with slow shutter speeds, using the vibration reduction system, and uh, Got a lot of good experience with that. And then I took it out to an air show for some action photography. And so I know a lot of people are going to want to use this for sports photography because it has some very incredible capture rates. And so there's a lot of experience that I got with this camera. 
and kind of lessons learned from out in the field that I will be sharing with you as we go throughout the, the rest of this class. And so I know that there's a lot of different types of photographers who do a lot of different things, and I'm going to try to address as many different ways of operating the camera and different types of uh, important things that you're going to want to know about for those different genres of photography. So hope you're ready for a very in-depth class because we've got a lot here for you.